Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for next uh, week, same day for today's second video. So day 10, take us around 21st of March. We're going to extend out beyond that. We extended GFS and ECM on summers. Very trying to couple of weeks. We're going to have a look at CFS 2 at the end of the video. Next four weeks, that will take us into the early part of April. Time's getting on, isn't it? Uh, the first uh, video release today was the European Outlook, so have a look at that one if you would uh, like to do that, see what's going on in detail uh, for the next week to 10 days uh, across Europe. Uh, now, before we do anything else, I've got to say thank you so much to uh, our latest uh, PayPal donor. So, thank you so much uh, to Connor Harper for becoming a PayPal donor uh, for Gaz Webbies. Connor is also a channel member uh, for Gaz Webbies as well. So, thank you so much to Connor. Unbelievable. Thank you so much, my friend. It's incredibly kind. Uh, everybody say thank you to Connor Harper for becoming a Gaz Webbies PayPal donor. If you'd like to become a donor for Gaz Webbies, all you need to do is come to Gaz Webbies of his paypal uh, dot me page uh sign into paypal account and give whatever donation you would like to gasworthy thank you so much everybody for doing that you can also become a patron of the gasworthy and hello and thank you so much to our patrons uh as well if you'd like to become a patron of gasworthy all you need to do go to the uh patreon page and uh, sign uh, up for a Patreon account. Assuming you don't really have one. I mean, you become a uh, patron uh, for Gaz Weathers. And, of course, you can become a channel member for Gaz Weathers uh, as well. You do that by clicking uh, the Join button here on the uh, Gaz Weathers, uh, on the Gaz Weathers YouTube homepage. There it is. Uh, just there. Click Join, and uh, you'll be able to become a channel member of the Gaz Weathers. Now, there is a little bit of uh, uh, confusion about subscribing and channel membership. So, to subscribe is completely free. You do not have to pay anything to become a subscriber to Gaz Weathers uh, YouTube channel. Just uh, click Subscribe, you know, the Subscribe button. And um, and uh, uh, click the bell as well. You'll be notified when we uh, release uh, our content and also live stream. Channel membership is something extra, like taking it to the next level. And uh, you get various benefits and perks for becoming a channel member. But you don't need to become a channel member to subscribe. So you don't need to pay any money to, su to, to subscribe. Uh, one or two people uh, sometimes think that you do need uh, to pay to subscribe. But that is not the case at all. Subscribers are currently at 10,744. So uh, if you have not yet subbed our channel, this would be uh, YouTube um, Social Blade plugin uh, for YouTube, uh, by the way. So if you uh, would, uh, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, then please can you give us a sub. We're on the grind to 11 It has turned into a real grind, hasn't it? So please give us a sub if you aren't yet subbed. And don't yet tell friends, family, everybody else to subscribe as well. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Right, let's get on the video then. Let's start off with the Central England temperature. Uh, so CT is currently standing at 4.6 uh, which is an anomaly around half a degree below average. That's provisional up to uh, yesterday the 10th of uh, the 10th of March. So this is probably uh, going to hover around that sort of level I think for the next few days. There's no sign of anything particularly mild uh, coming up. That is after a rather mild day yesterday as well by the way. There's no sign of anything particularly mild uh, coming up in, in the next few days. Next week looks a little bit more anticyclonic but even then Probably a little bit on the chillier side. So it is beginning to look as though this might turn in to, to a rather cold and average month. But it's still it's early days. I mean, it's only, we're only like 10 days in. So all it takes is like, like it's going to take like a really warm spell at some point, And that will scupper that idea. But at the moment, it is quite a cool march that we are experiencing following on, of course, from, from a cold uh, January, a cold average January. But February was relatively mild, even though it contained the coldest part of the uh, winter. Definitely feels a little bit cooler, does it? Let me know in the comments what you think. But I think this is rather, uh, this year is feeling rather cooler so far. Uh, and I say, it doesn't look like there's anything particularly mild coming up in the foreseeable future either. So if these are BGFS of rare temperature and precipitation ensembles for London. Red line is a third year upper air temperature average for London. So we're basically below average now um, through to the early part of next week. Even into like the early to middle part of next week, there's a slight tick up in the upper air temperatures, but nothing overly exciting. And the ensemble mean is still a little bit below the long-term average, and then a bit, and then a bit of a fall away again, really, as we go further on through the third week of March, and now into the last week of March. Overall, just looking quite cool 
does it looking quite cold uh, really over the next uh, over the next sort of 10 days possibly a couple of weeks there are some hot outliers or some warm outliers being particularly that blue one which really goes off uh, that blue run which really goes off on a tangent there but but it's a chilly outlook at the very least and maybe quite a cold outlook including today's uh, GFS operational run, which is the thick green line. I mean, that's going down at times around minus 10 at 850 HPA. It's a bit of an outlier. It's not really an outlier because it's well support. It's got support from other on some members. It's at the coldest end of the range. But but it just looks quite chilly and quite cold, uh, really, I think, over the next uh, week or two. Precipitation-wise, not only on sale, there will be some showery uh, weather coming up over the next few days. They're probably going into a drier spell, if anything, uh, later next week as high pressure begins to build in. But the position of that high pressure doesn't look like it's going to draw in anything overly warm. Temperature anomalies uh, from the 11th to the 19th of March are going to be around or slightly below average in most parts of Europe. Precipitation uh, anomalies, whoops, that's not quite right so let's just flip that over to uh, precipitation there we go pretend that happened every that didn't happen everybody uh right so precipita precipitation anomaly it's on the 11th to 19th of march uh about average a little bit dry as you east of scotland a little bit western average from northwestern england and north it's not a particularly big deviation uh anywhere but but it does look you know uh close to average away from east of scotland where it's a bit wetter than average Right, here's the latest info map from EarthNoldSchool.net showing that the Westerlies have really pushed in. Look at this, Westerlies all the way from like Newfoundland over the Atlantic into uh, into Western Europe and now extending on up towards Scandinavia as well. So this is what we call a long fetch Westerly, very zonal, Atlantic driven setup. And uh, yeah, those Westerlies are going to continue for some time to come, I think. Uh, this is how the UK Met is looking for Sunday. So in a cool, maybe quite cold and showery west to northwest wind with a bit of a ridge building out to our west. As we get through to the early part of next week, this high pressure tries to get more influential and does eventually build in more or less to the UK. But still really around the, uh, around the east side of this ridge, we're pull, uh, pulling the wind in from like a northerly direction. So although it will be settling down through next week, turning drier, I wouldn't expect temperatures to be particularly exciting, and especially by night, could be quite calm. So the GFS 6 then is looking again rather cold and showery for Sunday. Uh, winds in from a west northwesterly direction, bringing plenty of showers into the northwest. And high pressure reaches in from the west and from the southwest as we go through the early part of next week, bringing increasing amounts of dry weather with it. But with winds coming in from the north around the eastern side of that area of high pressure, there will be uh, there will be chilly temperatures at the very least. It could be quite cold uh, when skies are clear. Now, later that next week, that high pressure goes even further north and starts to pull in some colder air from uh, the east. So as we get through to the end of next week, this is Friday the 19th of March, over a week away. But we've got high pressure sitting uh, between sort of uh, southern Norway and southern Iceland. And, and winds are in from an easterly direction now. So we're pushing minus 5 Celsius ice firm through the country. Minus 10 Celsius ice firm is over the other side of the North Sea. And could well be starting to bring some uh, snow showers into southeastern parts of the country there by the end of next week. We keep those winds in from an easterly direction as we go through to weekend of the 20th uh, to 21st of March. Still looking pretty cold, especially across England away as well. And then the high pressure begins to move up towards Greenland. So a little bit of retrogression on this uh, GFS uh, 6 z run. The high pressure starts to push up to Greenland and we're threatening to pull down quite a cold northerly wind. And so as we go just beyond day 10, which gets us to 22nd of March, we are actually pull pulling in a really cold northerly blast here with the high pressure away to the northwest. So this minus 10 Celsius ice berm is plunging down uh, across the country. That's very impressive uh, for the second half of March to do that from the north. Um, as we go through beyond that, like minus 10 is pushing further south, even down into southern parts of the country. We know from the ensemble that it's not exactly an outlier this, but it is like at the coldest end of the range. Um, but several other members of the GFS ensembles are doing something similar, so it certainly can't be discounted. And even if we don't get minus 10 through the country, which is quite unlikely really in the second half of March, even if we don't do that, we could still get 
you know, really quite a potent northerly, certainly uh, for March. That might deliver some snow to particularly northern and eastern parts of the country. We finish up with the GFS uh, 6 then, still with high pressure out to our west, and looking like we're probably going to renew that northerly, uh, if anything, by the 27th of March. Long way out, of course, beginning to run up towards the Easter period then. GM looks like this. Uh, so again, winds are in from a cool, cold, showery northwesterly direction uh, over weekend into the early part of next week. That ridge of high pressure begins to pull in from off the Atlantic, turning drier through towards the middle of next week with high pressure out to the west. And again, winds are coming in from a northerly direction. Moving up towards day 10, the high pressure is maintained over and slightly to the west of the country. Again, coming around that ridge is a relatively cool northwesterly wind. Certainly nothing particularly warm. And uh, up towards day 10, it looks like high pressure is pulling out into the Atlantic then. Maybe starting to bring a milder and slightly more unsettled westerly in with the GM by day 10. Uh, ECMWF looking like this. Uh, once again, we've got these cool, showering, quite cold northwesterly winds uh, over the weekend. Into next week, the high pressure increasingly building up from the southwest, bringing lots of dry weather uh, with it. Whoops, we don't want to go there. We want to go back to there, bringing a lot of dry weather with it. Um, through the middle part of next week, but will be quite cool with those winds remaining from like a northerly direction. Heading up towards day 10, uh, again, it's all sort of high pressure dominated just to our west, so it won't be particularly unsettled. It'll be relatively dry, but around the ridge, we're on the cold side of the ridge, you see. So anytime the high pressure is sitting to our west, the way winds circulate around the high pressure means that will bring the wind in from, like, uh, at the very least, a northwest, if not a northerly direction. If you want something warm, you've got to get that high pressure to our east. So, so the winds with this are coming around the ridge in that direction. If you want to get things warm, um, by the summer hot, you want to get the high pressure to the south and to the east, and that draws the wind up from a southerly uh, direction, of course. So any time we have the high pressure to our west, then, then we'll be on the cool side of the ridge. That's how it looks as we get towards day 10, possibly starting to bring something a little bit milder in from off the Atlantic there. No sign of that normally with either the ECM or the GM that, uh, that the GFS Zig said is showing just beyond day 10. Uh, right, this is the precipitation type forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. So we'll just go through this. Uh, very quickly. So again, wintry showers packing into the north and west over the next uh, few days into weekend. Another spell of wet weather actually pushing through there on Saturday. That might deliver some snow over high ground in the north as well. Uh, then go through to next week, of course, we're still bringing showery rain in from the north and west through the course of next week. But the trend will be towards drier conditions as that high pressure builds out to our west. But all the time, still showers are likely uh, in the east, really. Uh, so never completely drying out in the east and no doubt being quite cold with those winds remaining from a northwesterly direction. Right, I've got quite a bit of refreshing going on here. So I'm going to pause the video, I think, there. And I'll refresh your tabs, uh, and then we'll cut see you in a second. Right, there you go. Tabs refresh. Sorry about that, everybody. Right, these are the options on the table within the ECM Ensembles today for day 10. Uh, gets to 21st of March. Have 11 members of the ECM uh, and five of the Icelandic Met Office, by the way, they've brought them back. Have 11 members of the ECM Ensembles with high pressure to our west. And so will be bringing in, like, uh, a west northwesterly type uh, wind direction. That does include the operation run. Dry but quite chilly. 11 with high pressure to our east northeast. Bringing in the winds from an easterly direction with that one. 10, with high pressure ridging in from the Atlantic into Western Europe. Mainly dry and probably a bit milder with that one. 7, with high pressure blocking within the normal latitudes. Low pressure to our south. Winds in from an easterly direction. That could be cold and wintry. 6, with high pressure to the south. Low pressure to the north. Winds are going to be flat and westerly with that. And then another 6 just here with, again, high pressure to the north. Low pressure to the south, in comes the wind from an easterly direction. Most of the options seem to involve high pressure, but the exact placement of that ridge uh, is varying with those options. Many of the options do look quite chilly, though, I have to say, at the very least. Quite a big change uh, in two weeks' time. 
So, uh, so actually, let's go down to that. So, uh, quite a few changes in two weeks' time, which is going to get us to the 26th of March. We have 15 members of the ECL Ensembles there, showing low pressure, properly dominating from off the Atlantic. So, that's going to be very unsettled and, uh, and probably quite cool as well. Uh, 11 just here have lower pressure out in the North Atlantic. Maybe a slight sign of a build of high pressure um, from the south with that, but probably still rather showery. Uh, looks quite strange, that one. 11 with high pressure uh, between Iceland and Norway, low pressure over France, the winds coming in from a properly cold easterly direction. 8 with high pressure sitting over and just to our east, mainly dry and quite mild with that, winds coming up from a southwest direction. And then 6 with low pressure just to our north and a flat westerly. Quite cool and unsettled with that one. Most of the options are still looking pretty cool, even out two weeks, I have to say. Lastly, the South SV2, these are 500 millibar heights breaking down to wheat pits. The first wheat pit takes from the 11th to the 17th of March. The coming week looks unsettled and cool, with low pressure over and slightly to the east of the country. High pressure to our southwest winds in from like a northwesterly direction. We go through to week two, quite a big change. Uh, it's the 18th, 24th of March. High pressure then uh, somewhere between Norway and Scotland. Winds are probably in from an easterly direction. Low pressure, of course, through southern parts of Europe. That looks like it could be quite cold from the east. Week three is going to be the uh, 25th to the 31st of March with high pressure to our uh, west and northwest. Winds again in from more of an easterly direction. Again, mainly dry, high pressure dominating, but it's all coming in from quite a cold wind direction, I have to say. And then uh, week four is the 1st to the 7th of April. Higher pressure then over and to our north and west. And again, just rather a cool wind direction, I think, with that. Again, Memphis probably is on dry weather. The Atlantic is blocked off, so it should be overly unsettled, but certainly could be quite chilly at the very least. Week 1 temperature anomaly uh, from the 8th, from the 11th to 17th of March is close to possibly hinting at being slightly below average. But it's cold as we get through to week 2 across many parts of Europe anyway. This is the 18th, 24th of March. England away as cold now. If it's gotten a little bit milder, average not sure about that. Notice how cold most parts of Europe are though, with both, or most parts of Europe is with those easterly winds. Week 3, uh, also looking quite cold. It's the 25th to the 31st of March. The last week of March is again cold. Now, this would be a colder than average month if it came off. And week 4, which is the 1st of the 7th of April, only sort of close to average, really. That's a slight recovery. It looks pretty cold. It looks like we're setting up a cold of an average March here. But as I keep saying, it is early days. If you've enjoyed the video, please can you smash the like button. Uh, not literally, don't damage your device, but please give us a like. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You may see future weather content if you do that. Tell your friends, family, everybody else to subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing this. And uh, drop a comment. And let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much, everyone. Right, that's it for uh, today's videos, then. We're going to be back tomorrow with Jamie Friday. Have a 10 to 14 day for you tomorrow as well. So keep checking back to all of the uh, content and uh, to the channel. Keep checking back to the channel for all of the content. Uh, but for today's videos, thank you so much, uh, everybody. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. That's all for now. Bye for now.